Good morning, metalheads of the internet, and welcome to a brand new episode of The Metal Meltdown. More specifically, a brand new Albums I Missed video. Today we are going to be talking about a slew of albums that came out in the month of April 2023 that unfortunately we did not previously have the chance to talk about in a full album review in really any capacity whatsoever. It's not necessarily a massive list because I feel like we've already covered some of the most noteworthy and interesting records of April 2023, but there are, uh, you know, a decent amount of records here and I am, quite frankly, a busy man nowadays. So let's not waste any time. Let's just jump right into it. First up, we have The Hope of a Spark, a brand new EP from Atreyu, and it's... it's bad. Yeah. I don't really feel I need to elaborate on this one. It's it's modern day Atreyu. They've gone full-blown butt rock, and it's really lame and really overprocessed and obnoxious, and it's boring and I don't like it. I guess if after listening to their previous studio album, Baptize, you thought to yourself, man, what if this was even fucking lamer? Maybe this will do it for you. I don't know. I guess this is probably still a better project overall than Baptized, though, because it's shorter. I don't know. I'm kind of grasping for straws to say something nice. Like I said, it's modern day Atreyu. It's fucking lame. Eh, whatever. Next, we have another EP, this time from Brand of Sacrifice, entitled Between Death and Dreams. And I like it. It's solid. It's cool. I'm not digging this as much as I dug 2021's Lifeblood, and I'm a little disappointed that we're not getting a full-blown studio album after, you know, all this hype and anticipation. But, that aside, it is a thoroughly well-produced, a thoroughly entertaining little mini deathcore roller coaster in its own right, on its own ground. I like the heavier emphasis on these more epic arrangements and structures, like there's more orchestral work, there's more clean vocals, the breakdowns and gravity blasts, they just go a little bit harder, they have a little bit more weight and gravity to them. They're definitely leaning away from like some of the brutal death metal influences of Lifeblood, but it still feels pretty intense, like there are some sections here and there that honestly would not be out of place on a modern day cattle decapitation record. Another solid release for sure from this up and coming Canadian deathcore crew looking forward to seeing what they do next i'm not in love with this ep but it does do what i expect most eps to do it gives me something to nibble on while i wait for the full-blown studio album which hopefully is coming soon hopefully and hopefully finds a soft spot in between what this ep is doing and what lifeblood was doing hopefully hopefully fingers crossed next up we have invisible queen brand new studio album from german thrash metal underdogs Holy Moses, this ended up coming out the same weekend as uh, Scorched and 72 Seasons from Overkill and Metallica, respectively. As a result, it got a little bit um, uh, overshadowed, swept to the side, shall we say? Which is a shame, honestly, because I, I think this record is much better. Not, like, colossally, but better overall. Like, it's meaner, it's heavier, it has some more complex arrangements and riffs and patterns and such. Love the menacing vocal work, love the crushing, explosive, technical guitar work as well. The album has a great feel and vibe to it. The production could use a little bit more muscle and grit in my opinion, but overall, it sounds really good. Sounds pretty much what you want from like, you know, like an older thrash metal band putting out a new record. The second disc is an arguably unnecessary, seeing as how it really only adds some special guests to songs that you've already heard on disc one. But credit where it's due, those special guests, including members of Nervosa, Sodom, the aforementioned Overkill and more, all play their fucking hearts out. Overall, I'd say if you're looking for a, a German alternative to the aforementioned Scorched and 72 Seasons, Look no further than this. It's not the best thrash metal of the month. That definitely goes to War Remains from Enforced. But, you know, solid runner-up. Solid silver medal. Next up, we have The Name Lives On from <laughs> Texas Hippie Coalition. Because apparently this band still exists in 2023. Oh my god. Look, no disrespect to these guys. I'm sure they're all wonderful fucking people, and they're by no means untalented, you know? Like, this is a, a well-put-together album. It's well-produced. It's well-performed. It's got heart. It's got uh, grit and soul 
But like, god damn, this music is so fucking lame. Like, it's just like really simplistic, edgy butt rock with like a southern coat of paint. And there's really not much going on other than exactly that. It could be fun, like, maybe in small doses, you know? Like, if I were at a fucking strip club, and I was fucking out of my goddamn mind drunk on fucking whiskey, and, and some of this stuff was playing, yeah, sure, fuck it, why not? Or if I was at, like, a country bar or something like that, yeah, sure, fuck it, why not? But the album is far too repetitive and, and far too one-dimensional to really give it much time beyond that kind of environment and setting. Next up, we have Homo Deus from Stillbirth, and... Honestly, I'm not really feeling this either. Very straightforward, very predictable, brutal death metal with the same lurching grooves and blast beats and breakdowns you've heard from like a hundred thousand other fucking bands. The production, the mixing and mastering across this album, especially the guitar tone, is also just a little too clean, which feels weird to say in context of brutal death metal, but here we are. Like, I feel like brutal death metal, more so than any other, like, niche metal subgenre, should really have a lot of, like, muscle and weight in the guitar tone. And I'm just not really feeling this here. It feels like, I don't know, it just feels like really sanitized, weirdly. Not a lot of twists and turns. The album's maybe just a little bit too long for my liking. I prefer my brutal death metal records on the shorter side. Not terrible, just not my cup of tea. Like... I don't know, um, if you're down with some super straightforward meat and potatoes brutal death metal, this'll do the trick, but otherwise I don't see much a point. Next up we have Sickness in the North from Bird Flesh, and this one's interesting. Surface level, silly, goofy, over-the-top grindcore, and that is true, it is very tongue-in-cheek, very self-aware, and it's also definitely a grindcore record. I mean, for God's sakes, like, the longest song on here is like two fucking minutes long, and it definitely has like, the intensity and the bark and bite of classic late 80s grindcore. But it does also have like, a few little twists and turns here and there. Like, Welcome to the Jungle Rot legitimately sounds like an old Van Halen track, but like, sped up and turned into like, a death grind banger. Hammer Smash Japanese Face also very proudly uh, wears Japanese hardcore influence on its sleeve. I Will Never Rot has some sneering vocals and some battering percussion and these almost tremolo-like riff passages that definitely brings to mind like some black metal. And then there's Fat Pigs, which I don't really even know how to describe. Do you guys remember when uh, the Rammstein lead singer Till Lindemann did a solo album? I guess Fat Pigs kind of sounds like something that might have been on that, but like, if it was circus music instead of like a heavy metal, industrial metal, alt metal backdrop, if that makes sense. I hope it does. I don't think it does though. And all the while, you still have your standard grindcore ragers and bangers and bops scattered across the record, you know? It's intense, it's cutthroat, tight as shit. Yeah, I, I dig it. I like it. If you're looking for something furious and heavy and extreme and in your face, but with a good sense of humor and a few super silly twists and turns, I would say definitely check this out. Next up, we have Devil Music from Portrayal of Guilt, and, and full disclosure, full honesty, for realsies, guys, I didn't know anything about this record until Anthony Fantano posted his review. Like, this, this flew straight under the motherfucking radar for me, and I'm disappointed in, in, in that. I'm disappointed in myself. Honestly, because I like Portrayal of Guilt. Like, I really enjoyed everything they did back in, in 2021, like with uh, We Are Always Alone and, and Christ Fucker. Like, those records were fucking fantastic. And yet I didn't know shit about Devil's Music until Mr. Mellon <laughs> talked about it. Oh, goddamn. I'm, a, I'm, I'm disappointed in myself. I'm really sorry, guys. I'll, I'll try to be better, I promise. Whatever. Moving on. Devil Music. Holy shit. What a fucking amazing record. They've just totally upped the intensity. This thing is disturbing. This thing is weird. It has all of these sliding guitars and all of these weird crescendos and all of these weird, like, noisy extreme metal explosions. Like, it's going, like, full-blown blackened grindcore, but it's also throwing in, like, some sludgier elements, some harsher, noisier elements. Like, at times, this just literally sounds like a fucking nightmare. 
There's some more spacious moments too, which provide a lot of really uneasy atmosphere. Love the entire second half of this uh, record too, which is essentially one long form number with string work and keyboards, and it's it's absolutely fucking haunting. Like there's all these monstrous venomous sneers and shouts and roars alongside like cello and and violin and it sounds massive and it's scary as shit. This album definitely earns the title devil music to be blunt. I I, I love this thing. Uh, this is my favorite thing I've heard from Portrayal of Guilt yet. Uh, it's their most ambitious record to date. Um, I wish I could have done a, a full album review. I really do. Uh, had I done so, we'd be looking at a very, very, very strong 4.5 out of 5. Uh, absolutely check this fucking thing if you haven't already. Don't, 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 don't be me. Don't let this fly under the radar. Check it out. Next up, we have Threads of Unknowing, the sophomore studio album from this progressive blackened death metal crew, Void Ceremony. Uh, now featuring Phil Taga of Cathealist, Atramentus, and First Fragment Fame on lead guitar. I like this thing a lot. It's got a lot of depth and body. It's versatile. It's heavy as holy fucking shit. It's really grim. It's got a really dark, spacious sound and atmosphere in production. The guitar and bass work is honestly some of the best I think I've heard on a death metal record so far this year. Phil Taga definitely gave these guys a, a much needed kicking the motherfucking ass. Vocals aren't really doing a lot for me. It's that very standard kind of like cookie monster, incomprehensible guttural. But all in all, Threads of Unknowing is a more than solid blast of uh, weird, over the top death metal that uh, I, think, uh, I think you're really gonna enjoy. I'm really looking forward to seeing what this band does in the future. Like, I, I feel like if they continue expanding and evolving and, re and refining their sound, like, they could end up with something really fucking special with their next album. Next up, we have Velvet Incandescence, brand new studio album from Don of Ouroboros. I think we talked about their debut back in 2020. It might have been in another Albums I Missed video. Whatever. Here's what I do know. Uh, I like this album. I like its mixture of progressive metal, post-metal, and black gaze. A lot of dazzling, ethereal, atmospheric soundscapes and melodies and arrangements contrasted with harsh, cold, black metal. A lot of progressive twists and turns. A lot of dynamics. Kind of feels like we took Savalbard and like really early Death Heaven and we just threw it into a blender and we made like the most depressing fucking uh, black gaze prog metal sangria of all time. And we're, and we're just chugging it on like a fucking cold, rainy, gray day. Some of the transitions can be tuned up a little bit, and I'd like to see a little bit more urgency when the band does lean heavier into the black metal influences and sections. But overall, I think it's a very well-constructed album, and if you're looking for something that's kind of weird and atmospheric and, and, you know, perfect for, again, a cold, rainy, gray day, absolutely check this bad boy out. Next up, we have the Intergalactic Gorbong of Def Pot from Bonginator. And, and yes... I promise you, and I say this as nicely as possible, it's every bit as fucking stupid as it sounds. <laughs> oh my god, this this thing is fucking... It's not silly, it's not goofy, it's just flat out fucking stupid. The band is called Bonginator, for fuck's sakes, ladies and gentlemen. They're writing songs like Zombie Party Rockers and 420 Pound Poop. What more do you need to know? Fucking honestly. It kind of feels like somebody looked at Cannabis Corpse and said, hey, what if this was the most basic, primitive, ooga booga caveman death metal ever? Like, what if it was just Cookie Monster uh, gutturals and like the most simplistic, ham-fisted riffs ever and like tinny percussion? You can laugh at it in small doses. Hell, I'm laughing at it right now. And to be fair, you know, it's it's not like objectively horrible, you know. You get real fucking high, I'm sure, as Bonginator intends you to do while you listen to this. And I'm sure you'll headbang to some of these fucking riffs and beats. But uh, yeah, listening to it sober um, and more than once, don't don't recommend. Uh, it's 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 just kind of stupid. And finally, let's start wrapping things up with Shamaholic Vibrations, debut EP from Lunar Chamber, playing around with some psychedelic, 
progressive death metal, and holy shit, it fucking rules. Super dynamic, robust production and songwriting and musicianship. I like a lot of the trancey elements. I love a lot of the spiritual elements. Lots of twists and turns. It's heavy and atmospheric as shit. It's a little bit long for an EP, but fuck it. I mean, I'd rather just treat this thing as an album. It certainly has the substance and the weight and like the power of an album. Definitely leaves me crazy hardcore hyped the fuck up for a full-blown studio album. Like, my fucking God. If this is just what they're putting out on a debut EP, I can't imagine what they're saving for the full album. Yeah, you definitely, definitely need to check this out. It's fucking great. And you definitely need to keep a very, very close eye on Lunar Chamber in the future. And that is it for the Metal Meltdown. Those are all the albums that I feel I missed in the month of April 2023. Obviously, there's still going to be at least a few more that probably flew under the radar, and I encourage you to tell me all about those albums and many more in the comment section below. As always, press this button right here to subscribe. Look, more videos. Hooray! And as always, you have yourself a fantastic fucking day.